Hello Info person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the more intriguing and somewhat unusual discoveries in regards to nearby white dwarfs that actually really surprised the scientists. With one of these unusual white dwarfs, at first even believed to be moving toward us at ridiculously high speeds, potentially crossing the solar system sometime in the future. And so in this video, let's discuss some of these unusual discoveries in regards to magnetic white dwarfs and the very strange effects they tend to produce. But first, let's start with the mystery. So just a few months ago, back in February of 2023, there was actually an unusual paper published by several scientists that used a lot of the data from the Gaia Space Telescope, the incredible telescope producing extremely accurate observations of nearby stars, and a telescope that's already made a lot of brilliant discoveries, to essentially discover several stars that will most likely cross the solar system, or pass very close to the solar system, in the next thousands or millions of years. And although some of these stars we discussed previously, with the video in the description explaining a little bit more, one of these stars was actually kind of surprising. It's a star whose name you see right here, and as the name implies, it was essentially a white dwarf. An object very similar in size to planet Earth, but the object that contains a mass of a typical star, or basically the future of our Sun. An extremely compact object that generally contains very condensed matter. And though we actually understand these objects pretty well, and a lot of these have already been studied, some of them surprised the scientists for many different reasons in the last few years. I think there are some videos in the description describing some of these mysteries. But the interesting thing about this white dwarf was that it seemed to be moving toward us, and it was only about 36 light years away from us already. And the calculations from this particular study suggested that it's actually going to pass through the solar system in the next 29,000 years at a distance of about half a light year or approximately 30,000 astronomical units. Now this might sound pretty far away, but it's actually within the Oort cloud, the region where there are quite a lot of different comets, and the region that's responsible for a lot of long period comets. With the natural implication being that, well maybe it's actually going to disturb a bunch of these comets, and some of them will then make it toward planet Earth, increasing the overall chance for a potential collision in the next few millions of years. But that's of course, at least for now, just an assumption. I think a much more interesting discovery in this case is just the fact that it would happen within the next 29,000 years, and of course, the distances involved. Half a light year is actually really close. As a matter of fact, the only other confirmed flyby is from a star we discussed previously, Gliese 710, and in this case this is a flyby from a red dwarf approximately 1.1 million years in the future, and also at a much farther distance. So finding this unusual white dwarf was actually kind of surprising. And based on the analysis from Gaia Telescope, we know that it has a mass of about 0.6 solar masses, and it's also about 2.7 billion years old. But all of this was based on the observations from Gaia that essentially suggested it's moving toward us at approximately 370 km per second. So, so far so good, quite interesting. But here's the problem, and this is actually based on another recent study. Turns out that Gaia doesn't actually have a very correct way to calculate locations, positions, and speed for many different white dwarfs. Its software is not particularly good at measuring white dwarf properties compared to other stars. And so in this case it does produce a pretty big margin of error. And that's what the recent study actually tried to assess as well. By reanalyzing the spectrum from this white dwarf, they actually established that the velocity here could be as high as 4200 km per second moving toward planet Earth, suggesting that it's obviously moving toward us much quicker, but also that it's not going to pass through the solar system, basically missing us completely in the next few thousand years. But the margin of error here was even larger, also suggesting that it could be moving much much slower, approximately 80 km per second. And the thing is, if it was moving at 4000 km per second, it would officially make it the fastest moving star we've discovered in the Milky Way. One of the previous videos in the description actually does discuss these unusual hypervelocity white dwarfs that do exist in the Milky Way, but the record holder so far has a velocity of less than 3000 km per second. All of this is actually a result of a very unique, very specific type of a supernova that kicks out a white dwarf with ridiculously high velocities because of its partner that explodes nearby. But discovering such a unique object next to us would sort of be extremely unlikely. And so the assumption here was that maybe there was actually something else going on, and maybe that light coming from this white dwarf was shifted by something or changed by something for one reason or another. And so this recent paper might have actually finally solved it. Not so fast, not so furious. Just magnetic. 
In essence, it suggests that all of this light was very likely blue shifted toward us by extremely powerful magnetic fields around this particular white dwarf. Something that we do observe from things like, for example, neutron stars and black holes, but something that's somewhat uncommon from white dwarfs. And so even though it is definitely headed toward the solar system, it's moving toward us with a total velocity of approximately 83 kilometers per second. Not too high, not too low. And because of this very powerful magnetic field, it led to various scientists misinterpreting the trajectory and the velocity of this white dwarf. And so in reality, not only is it moving much slower, it's also very unlikely to actually move through the solar system at all, and it only appears to move toward us right now. But as the sun moves toward one direction and the white dwarf toward the other direction, in the next million years, they're not really going to approach each other too closely. But the most important part about this whole discovery being the magnetic field itself. It basically once again implies that certain white dwarfs seem to possess extremely powerful magnetic fields that we've never really seen before in a lot of other white dwarfs. In order for the magnetic field of this white dwarf to blue shift the spectrum so much that it actually makes the white dwarf appear to be moving much faster and to basically produce this illusion of motion, the magnetic field here has to be one of the strongest we've ever seen. And this directly relates to the other discovery from just the last few weeks of a peculiar white dwarf that exhibits properties of what we usually refer to as a pulsar. The object that usually has very powerful magnetic fields and spins really fast producing a lot of radio emissions or even other emissions including x-rays, but the object that's basically entirely magnetically driven. These are essentially neutron stars with super powerful magnetic fields. But back in 2016, the scientists discovered a very unusual object that resembled a pulsar, but was actually doing this. It was pulsating its partner through some kind of a very powerful magnetic interaction. This object is known as AR Scorpii, with the older video about this in the description, and in a nutshell it showed us that certain white dwarfs acquire ridiculously powerful magnetic fields and even turn into pulsars, basically resembling neutron stars from a distance. Although compared to a neutron star, the period of pulsations was much longer. It was nearly two minutes long. For a neutron star pulsar, this would be in milliseconds. And so the scientists recently discovered another one of these objects with a period of 5.3 minutes, suggesting that these white dwarfs with very powerful magnetic fields do exist, they're just kind of rare. With the new question being, how exactly do they acquire these magnetic fields? And the only explanation that we have right now involves the idea of dynamo and the cooling of the white dwarf. Basically, as they age and as they cool down, the internal structure undergoes various changes, including crystallization, which sort of forms an extremely similar structure to what we have inside planet Earth. And so in essence, the magnetic field produced inside our planet, the result of so-called dynamo, is possibly a very good model for what happens inside white dwarfs as well. Especially white dwarfs that are aging and the white dwarfs that have developed a crystallized core on the inside. With the ocean of electrons on the inside basically becoming a convective fluid that creates the magnetic field as the white dwarf spins. At least that's the assumption for now. At the moment it's actually unclear how white dwarfs produce these very powerful magnetic fields. In this case it's about a million times stronger than the one around the sun but it's something that's most likely going to be solved in the next few years. But I guess more importantly, it might help us solve other mysteries from the Milky Way, including unusual radio signals coming from within the Milky Way center that kind of resemble pulsating signals, but not the same signals as from a neutron star. So maybe these are white dwarfs as well. And so definitely something to talk about in some of the future videos and future studies, and something we're going to be exploring once we have a little bit more explanations. For now though, these are actually cool discoveries, Turns out that white dwarfs can appear to move much faster just based on the magnetic field itself. And also it turns out that maybe some of the previous calculations from the Gaia telescope involving different white dwarfs could actually have a mistake in them as well. But once there's more information or someone discovers something else, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Check out all the links in the description below. Thank you for watching. Subscribe. Share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. And maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.